G'day, this is John Barry, Adobe Ambassador based in Melbourne, Australia. Welcome to part three of Adobe Encore and Motion Menus. Sorry this took a little while to get to you, but I've been flat out. But what we're gonna look at today is getting a scenes menu put together and kind of be based on what's going on in that main menu. So what I wanna do first is get my main menu and just rename it. I just wanna make sure that I've got it set to main menu because that's how I'm going to be referring to it and that's the way I want us to be thinking about it. First thing you need to do is select this main menu and then duplicate it and we can do that in edit and duplicate. Now it's got the word copy on the bottom of it and again we'll rename this and we'll call this scenes menu. Okay so clearly we can see the difference between the two written over here but when we look at them comparatively, they are exactly the same thing. So first thing we need to do is change the way that this is understanding what's going on. It's no longer the eSeminar demo. We want to name it based on the actual menu itself, which is scene menu. So in here, I'm going to select my pen tool and just double click in there to highlight what's going on and then rename this scene menu. So now we know as a title that that's what this is. So I'm gonna hit escape to get out of there and accept what I've done to it, okay? Before I get too far ahead, I just wanna point out that because we've duplicated this, we've literally duplicated everything that's going on with that main menu. And in that main menu, in the motion tab, we had set music to it. So what I wanna do now is just clear that music because if you have music all the time, it can get very frustrating and very annoying. When you're navigating through a scene menu, I've found over the years that having music there is kind of wasted because people don't really spend that much time in that space. So effectively, we're gonna get rid of this audio. What I wanna do now while I've got my uh, button arrow selected is select my buttons and just shift them up a little. I'm gonna use shift and the arrow keys to move them up so I've got a bit more accuracy and I'll just move that one up too. And then I wanna duplicate, once I rename these, I'm gonna duplicate those two. So play movie is no longer play movie. We want this to be scene one, okay? And then the same with this one, we want that to be scene two. Right, I just wanna put a couple more in there Quickest way to do this is to hold the Option key on the Mac or hold the Alt key on the PC and then grab one of your little guys down there and you've basically created now a duplicate. You hold Shift, then you can move it in a perfectly straight line so you don't need to worry about things getting out of line. And I'll, I'll do this one more time but I'll use the duplicate function. Now what happens is when you use that duplicate function, it duplicates but it shifts it off to the side a little bit. Now the way to fix that is basically to move it exactly where you want it. Now I'm gonna move it a little bit to the side here because I want it to line up to the most left of this selection. So then they all line up perfectly to the left. So I wanna remove this relative to safe areas. And once I've removed that, I'm just gonna ask it to go left. And it's going to go left based on the selection of the group not left based on the title safe areas, which are hidden in here. Last thing we need to do is clean up the names of these. And you can see it's very, very quick. It doesn't take much effort at all. Now what happens when we want to get out of the scene menu and we wanna go back to the main menu? Well, in that situation, we need to have a main menu button. Now we can either use one of these guys or we can use this sort of play on the way that this stuff works too. I'm gonna to do that. So I'm gonna select the selection tool that will select objects. And I'm gonna duplicate this one. And the shortcut key on the Mac is, uh, let's remember Apple, or no, it's Command, Command D. And on the PC, it would be Control D. And I'll just flip that over, nice and easy. And then I'll get this particular gizmo as well, and we'll stick it down here and we'll call that scene menu. I might just switch on these guys so I can line up my title safe exactly the way that I know I need it. Okay, all looking very good. And we can see it's called scene menu. 
Now because it's not a button yet, I'm going to use the tool for text over here to select everything and then we'll call this main menu. Excellent. The last thing I want to do is just make sure that I've got this guy pushed right into the side there. Okay, now if I want to get accuracy, I can use the align relative to safe areas and then get it to align to the right and it's perfectly lined itself up there. And let's say it was up a bit too much. Just do it up here. Uh, object, align to the bottom and it's gone and lined it up perfectly to the bottom there. Now the one thing we have not got is this little highlight section. So I'm going to actually do that inside of Photoshop. So let's just save what we've got and right click in this empty space and edit in Photoshop. Okay, so we've got uh, a couple of things open there already and this is now our interface. So I'm just going to make that fit my screen a little better and we've got our main menu and we've got all the scene numbers all looking really, really nice. Last thing I want to do though is make sure that this main menu and the gradient are actually a button. How do I do that? Well, if I want to do it in here, I'd use this prefix with the brackets and the plus there. That with a folder indicates that the folder and everything inside that folder are now part of a button. So I'm just going to manually grab these guys and add them over the top of that little icon to make them in a new group folder. Double click on the name, put in my brackets and my plus and then call this main menu. And now that will be the name of that button. One thing that's missing though is the highlight. Now if we select this guy and drop it over the top of the new page or new item, we can now put it inside here and just check where it's come from all the way over there. We do want to move it and make sure that it lines up with our item that we want it associated with over here. Okay, all looks pretty good. Right, so now we've got all of our scenes set up as buttons and all our main menu set up. Everything is now set up the way that I want it, which looks really good. I'll just save this now. Save and go back to Encore and it's updated everything for us. So now when we check what the buttons look like, we can see all the highlights are now in place. Really, really fast way to work. And I've just created all this while explaining it and so it takes a little longer to do it. So now we need an animation that can take us to the scene menu. Now the fastest way to do that is to send it off to After Effects and create a composition. So I'm just going to save where it's going and while we're in here we'll double click on the scenes menu. So now what we need is some kind of animate in from when we go um, from the actual animate out, the main animate out for the main menu, which if you remember looks a little like this. Okay, everything goes to black. So now we're going to come out of black and then bring all the other elements in. Same process is involved and I'll just do a quick fade up. The fastest thing to do really is to create a new layer solid, make sure it's black and we'll make sure it's absolutely black. We've got zeros all running down there. Hit OK and then just animate this one. Just animate that one particular one. So let's move forward 20 frames and we'll tell that to now be zero. And so now it all fades up. So now we'll stop it. I like to always stop it about five frames later. One, two, three, four, five. And I used page down in order to get that. I'm going to hit N in order to make now this work area set to that in and that out, the beginning and the end. And then I'm going to trim the comp to that work area. So now my total time for my composition is one and one. So it's one second and one frame. Not very long. And this is going to be my animate in. So I'm going to rename that. And in CS5, you can right click and ask to rename. And I'll call this scene menu. I might just rename it and make it SM for scene menu. Uh, any in for animate in. Right. We'll send that off to the render queue. 
which it's already gone and done one for us. I do want to, however, take the name of this one and just copy that and then paste that in here over the top. Okay, and I might just make a new folder for my assets and then we'll put all our assets in there because we're going to have to make a few of these. Right, it's all ready to go. We'll hit render and away it goes. Okay, so we've got our animate in. We need our animate out. Because we've got specific little buttons there, we might want to animate out per button. So here's something that we can do. We take the animate in and actually use that composition and duplicate it. We're doing a lot of duplicating in this uh, particular tutorial. So in here, let's rename it and we'll call it Annie Out. But we might call it SM uh, and we might call it SM01. So I know that that's for chapter one or scene one. And we might do our animation to this but this time, let's just um, let's hide that particular layer and we'll use this little shy guy and tell the shy guy to hide it. Okay, all looking pretty good. We're back at the start. Now, what do we want to do? When we click on 01, what happens? Well, we click on 01 <clears throat> and I actually now want 2, 3 and 4 to sort of fade down. Not completely, but they all kind of fade down a bit and then I want it to go to black. Right, just to give a sense of everything moving. So how could we do that? Well, let's unhide this guy and we get our animation for this and move it down. So we wanna have it so then when we fade down, which this at the moment's fading up, we'll just uh, select the opacity there and put it down to zero. We do want it to go well, maybe let's put it at 50 just so we can get a sense of where it's affecting things down the line or effectively bring up the one that we don't want affected. So essentially what we're doing now, I've moved scene one up so then when this fades down, it fades down across, well, pretty much everything else. So 50%, maybe we'll make it at 70. Maybe we make it more like oh, 30 just so it goes down a little bit. Not by a heck of a lot, but a little bit. Last thing I want to do with this is actually not have it affect the scene menu, the picture of me and this main menu here. So how do we do that? Well, we can use the mask tool. And basically create a little mask that covers just the chapters that we want to be affected. So now let's animate that um, opacity. So it starts at 100 and then we move down within 10 frames. And this is just me picking a time out of my butt. Okay, so now it animates up to there. We might make it a little more prominent than that. Maybe we will go to 50. There we go. So then we do that and then we'll hold it for 10 and then we'll make it fade all the way down. So I add another keyframe in here because we need between those two points in time, the animation needs to stay the same. It's when we get to the end point, and I will just ask this to be a little bit longer now. Let's say we make it two seconds and we pull this out to zoom all the way out, grab here, grab all of these guys and use a shortcut, alt and close bracket with a square bracket, close square bracket and everything jumps to the end point there. Okay, so now let's see how we make it fade down. We might move forward plus one second. Okay, and then it goes all the way up to 100%. Right, now what's happening here is it's not affecting everything. So here's what I'm gonna do. I've created my animation and now I'm going to split this. Edit, split layer. Okay, and now it's a separate layer that I can put up above everything. And then I'm going to remove this little mask that we made. And then it's going to animate over the cross. Everything. Okay, looking pretty good. I've got my last little keyframe there. One, two, three, four, five. Well, four will do. We'll leave it at four. Okay, so this is actually looking pretty good now. I'm very happy with this. Now because we've set this up and now we use this as a template, 
we can go ahead and actually duplicate this and just change the position of what scene is set up here. At the moment we got scene one, we'll move it for scene two and put scene one back down and we'll go through that process one at a time. Before we do that, I do want to send this off to the render queue. So composition, add to render queue, and it's been set out and it's going to the same place that this one was set to. So if we have a quick look, it's going to that assets folder where the in has come. You know what, I'm gonna rename this. So then I've got out one, and then it will rename it for me automatically. How good is that? Out two, so let's duplicate, duplicate. Okay, so I've got all three, three more there, so one for each. Um, we've got four now. So this I'm gonna move down, and then two I'm gonna move up, in between there, and the same with this, put that in there, this one down down and up. Okay, good. Now to add these to the render queue, there's a couple of different things you can do. It's all very good and well, we can just go bang like that. Now they're all going to the same place, they're all being named based on the actual name of the composition. We'll just sit here, hit render, all looking pretty good, pretty schmick, pretty clean. Last thing we need is what happens when we hit main menu, and we go back. Okay, so then we need to do that thing where we've gone and reversed our absolute in. We'll rename this one, we'll duplicate that, rename it as out, and then instead of having my animation run that way, what I'm gonna do is click on the name opacity which selects all these associated keyframes, animation, keyframe assistant, time reverse. So now it starts, and then goes to fade. So I'm gonna just pull that all back to the near the end point there. And that's our out. Okay, because we had a simple out, we can just reverse it that way. Now the out we've got to send off to, rename that, and then send that to the queue, and then hit render. And we're gonna have a very nice, smooth, um, beautiful kind of set of assets that we can use and we'll bring in the asset folder with everything in it. Okay, good. So now we've got to stitch it all together. Now we've got our button selector, scene one, transition. Now it's remembered the transition based on this being the original um, setup for what we had in the main menu, so that movie sent to main animate out. And the same thing has gone in when we're in here, main animate out. You just gotta be aware of that stuff. So we want that asset to go to any one out, and then we set this up to two, set this one up for three, whoops, four. Okay, and then the main menu, we want that one to go to any out. All right, now the last thing we want to change is main menu, scenes. Now this is tricky. We animate out and that's correct. But what we need to do is make sure that our any in works as well. And how do you do that before you have that happen after a animate out, then animate in to a new menu. This is the trick. Okay, you want to highlight that and create a little timeline for it. So now what you're doing is using this timeline in itself as a linkable functional part of the way things work. So now what we do, we take our scene, we have our out, and that's the way that it should be. Everything here goes away and goes to black. Now before it goes to the actual main menu, we need to change this link to go to the animate in. And then at the end of the animate in, the end action will then be to go to the scenes menu. Okay, it's a little bit of a maze, but it will get us there. Right, the main thing we want here, main movie is set to link to the universal counter leader, and the universal counter leader is going to, at the end, go back to the chapter one section, Okay, now that's all been a little bit complicated, a little bit complex. I hope you're able to follow. So let's just check how this works. 
So we've got that animate in, and then it stops on play. We want to go down to scenes. So now that will animate out, and then it goes to the timeline to animate in, and then it'll stop on the actual scene itself. And now we can go through our scenes on main menu. And notice now when I check this, I can see that I've got problems with my scene buttons. When I hit down, it's going back to scene four. Okay, so now when I hit up, it actually goes to main menu. And up here doesn't work. This sometimes will happen when things are not lined up. Because I've gone across the frame, the automated function within that is a little bit screwy. So I'm just gonna show you before we finish, how to get that manually reconfigured and working again. So where are we now? We want to fix this scene menu. I'm gonna make this fit the whole screen here and click on this little button here to show button routing. And it's got the automated routing and it's all gone a little bit screwy, a little bit haywire. Now when it's in this mode, you can um, see the direction. So in the middle there, that's the number associated to that button. And then you've got your up, down, left, and right. And where, when you use the arrows, what button it's going to go to using those arrows. So even though we can see this, we can't manipulate it at the moment. We can't grab it and tell it where to go, which is what I want to be able to do. In order to do that, you need to have just the actual menu selected. And then you need to untick in the properties, automatically route buttons. So once that's off, now we can go in and manually set this up. I personally find most people are a little bit basic in what they understand as far as up and down and left and right when it comes to this stuff. So I tend to take away a lot of things. So I want up to go up to one, that's correct. I want this left and right to go nowhere, so I'm just grabbing and pushing this in this empty space. If you want to make it select something like that, you go down and actually touch what it is that you want that direction to do. So down, up is good, and right, I don't want that to work. I want that one. Five, yes. Now, this up, I want up to take us to four. And then I want down to take us nowhere. I want right, nowhere. And I want left, nowhere as well. So now we've just got this up and down functional zone. And that's all that we've got. Test it again. So now I've got up, because it doesn't go anywhere. And I've just got downs and ups. And that's all I've got. Okay, so main menu, let's just check what that does. Hit main menu, and it fades down. Right, now what we haven't actually asked it to do is work out what happens with main menu. Where does it go, right? And this is great. I'm testing this all in here and I'm able to check whether or not it's actually gonna do what I want it to. So let's turn that little button off in order to not manipulate these buttons anymore. I've still got my, um, still got my actual uh, button arrow and the link is not set to link anywhere. So I'm going to do it this way, or I'm going to use this listing here. Main menu, default. So let's just test that quick. Main menu, the animation, and then it will go back to there. So now we're faced with that same sort of situation. Well, exit here. We're faced with that similar situation where now I need my animate in again as far as being able to animate into this page, that's why we've got this set up here, okay, as our first play. So now, when we go back to the scene menu, main, instead of having it linked to the main menu itself, I want it to go to animate in. Okay, I hope I haven't smashed your brains too much. This is basically how things are done. All right, my name's John Barry, thanks for joining me. I'm an Adobe Ambassador based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, sorry this took such a long time in order to get this up and running, but I think you'll see there's quite a lot in there. And if you've got any questions, don't uh, hesitate to ping me a personal message in the AJB Prods YouTube channel. Thanks again. Ciao for now.